and then next time we can get into homogeneous transformations which combines rotations and translations. So, we think about conversions now So, we have we started with the rotation matrix and I gave you yaw pitch and roll right. So, that is the first thing we did and you can go back and forth between these, but you have to be very careful about the problems I talked about the kinematic singularities, the non uniform representation and just generally because of non commutativity it gets complicated. So, when you have individual rotations and you are not combining them it is nice, but that is because it is based on three different axis angle representations that happen to be the coordinate axes right. Then we went down the path of axis angle representations. So, I mentioned over here you can convert back and forth between quaternions and rotation matrices. Um, so, we can get to quaternions using this Q representation. So, unit quaternions So, you may want to convert back and forth between these I am not giving the exact conversion formulas here if you would like to look them up it is very easy to do a search and find those. You can also find them in my planning algorithms book I cover all these things in the context of robotics, but it is the same uh, kind of thing. So, so it is in my book. So, just you can look for that it is online for free um, and then there is very simple conversions between this and um, axis angle representation which by the Euler rotation theorem as I said is a very natural way to describe rotations. So, there is a very easy relationship between axis angle and quaternions um, it requires some computational expense to go back and forth between rotation matrices and the others. So, very often people like to work directly in quaternion space because um, it makes it very natural for for axis angle um, kinds of computations and representations as well and all of this will turn out to be advantageous when we do things like uh, head tracking and we want to avoid uh, kinematic singularities. Um, <clears throat> so, that is I think just about where I want to finish so, I think one, one let me add one last thing here um, which is the order of operations to pay attention to here um, and this is just one one sort of final reminder about non commutativity and to pay close attention to the order. we have the question of um, if I have rotations r 1 r 2 or I have quaternions q 1 q 2 there is the interesting question of which is applied first right. So, for example let us suppose I have um, some point p equals x y z and I calculate p prime equals r 1 p and then I calculate p double prime equals r 2 p prime. And now, I would like to combine both these matrices together. So, I want to figure out what is p double prime is it r 1 r 2 p or p prime double prime equals r 2 r 1 p. So, which one of these is it? So, this one. So, a lot of people do not like this they do not like the fact that wait a minute if um, if r 1 came first why is not r 1 appearing first right. So, it is backwards. So, a lot of people call this would say this is counterintuitive. This is the way the algebra works because these matrices are acting um, from the um, uh, from the left side and so, they come in act you know. So, th so, that if you look at it by putting parentheses in 
you can understand it like this right you say first this gets applied and then this gets applied. So, if you add parentheses and remember associativity which does not matter for matrix multiplication right in, in these at this stage um when we are when we are chaining together rotations um this does not matter because we have a group of matrices that are being multiplied. But nevertheless, if you add the parentheses back then you can keep track of it like that and remember that this is occurring first and then this. So, the order of operations matters because of non commutativity and just when you see a chain of matrices make sure you are correctly interpreting the order of operations. So, it is very easy to get that backwards it is a common um source of mistakes and another thing is when you would do inverses as we have talked about just make sure you are applying the proper inverses. So, if I take r 1 r 2 r 3 and I invert that just recall that you get r 3 inverse r 2 inverse r 1 inverse right. So, that is just a basic property of group theory it applies all over the place um when you are dealing with algebra that is commutative you do not care, but when you have non commutative algebra which we found ourselves dealing with because of 3 D rotations you have to reverse the order of the matrices when you apply the inverse and distribute it across each of the matrices right. So, just something to pay attention to. So, if you are going to invert a sequence of quaternions the same thing is going to happen you are going to have to reverse the order of the quaternions and then apply the inverse to each one which is just these simple sign changes that I told you about All right. Questions about that? All right. So, I am going to uh, I am going to finish up for today next time I will talk about homogeneous transform matrices you can read in chapters uh I believe 6 and 7 of the Shirley uh, graphics book if you would like some background on this thanks.